podcast welcome how you feeling hopefully everybody's week was good how's your mental health mine's all over the fucking place there's a lot of shit going on a lot of shit happening a lot of shit i'm concerned about trying to relax a little bit trying to take my mind off of shit but everywhere i turn the shit is right there in my face and the clock is ticking and It's like this impending doom that is about to sweep the nation. And the subject that's kind of got me like this is the subject of Project 2025 and what it's really about and what it's designed to do. It ain't good. And the more I look around, the more I see complacency from the other part of society. The people who are pushing this agenda, they're serious about it. It's everywhere. You have alt-right groups out in the middle of metropolitan downtown areas waving flags and marching through town. It is really, for lack of a better phrase, it's kind of frightening. It's kind of frightening of what could possibly take place. January 1st, set to go into Effect January 1st. There's a lot of things going on in the country. There's land being cleared. Prisons being built. Lots of things are transpiring to get ready for the changing of the guard. Let's face it, folks. If everybody watched the same debate I watched Joe Biden needs to go lay down somewhere and take a nap. His wife is fucking us by encouraging him and telling him and everyone else that he can do anything. No, he can't fucking talk. Part of the requirements to be president is fucking talking. Now, I don't want to badmouth Joe Biden at all. I really don't. You know, he did some fucked up shit in the past, and I feel like now he's trying to make amends for it, and cool, I'm with that. But I also think that he should try and realize when he when he is done, when your time has come, when you, you have ran a good race, my man, it's time to pass the torch. And I think that he should. I think he should pass it to Kamala even though I think her chances are very slim, but a lot better than President Biden's. We got to do something. Anybody who is listening or has listened to my podcast, I am begging you to pay attention. They're going to take us back. I mean, not, not back to lynching, But damn near back to Jim Crow. All the special protections. All of the things. That protect us in this country. Are going to go away. And by us I mean. Black Americans. You see this is. Targeted at a few things. But a lot of it is black Americans. I mean, there's some stuff about porn being illegal, you know, immigrants being deported immediately. 
But I think that it's much deeper and it goes much deeper. And don't fucking believe for a second that Donald Trump didn't know about it. If I fucking know about it, that motherfucker damn sure did know about it. And I've known about it for a while. What? What do you mean? I don't know anything about it. Yes, the fuck you do. Stop lying. You're famous for it. And I don't know why anybody would believe this motherfucker anyway. But it's the truth. That's what I feel. I feel that that is the truth, that he knew about it and he's comfortable with it. Otherwise, you need to say something and renounce it publicly. But he can't. He can't do that. Why? Because it would anger his base. This man is running on one platform alone. And it's the platform that has the most traction. And I can't say it, I can't say it enough. It's white supremacy. It's white supremacy at any cost. And we cannot let that happen. But somehow I feel that that's where we're headed. He's not running on any other platform. He's not running for health care or, you know, child tax credit. He's not running for any of that shit. He hasn't mentioned any of it. Hasn't can. It's just, we're the best. We're America. Put me in office and I'll show you how good we are. I'll make it great again. It was never great to begin with. The whole country started as a, a complete and total fuck up. The minute you fucked with the Indians, the minute you fucked with the native people, you tainted it. It's fucked up. It's stupid. To sit here and proclaim to be devout to your God, devout to your religion, when you are gearing up and setting up setting yourselves up to hate people and oppress people and put yourselves in front of everybody else. I think it's disgusting. I think it's shameful. But that's the not that's not the most shameful. The most shameful thing is the amount of people who say that this does not affect me. And it affects you directly. It is for you. It is written and designed for you. To cut you down. But you seem to think that this is not going to affect you. Rest assured, the policies that will be put forth will affect every man, woman, and child of any ethnic minority in this country, believe it. And if you don't, man, I feel sorry for you. I really do. Because that means that you're not paying attention. You're not paying attention. We don't have much time. We really don't. We do not have much time. We got to get organized. We got to do something about it. We got to do something soon. The one thing we are not is united. That's the one thing that I, 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 I can't stress enough is for us to become united. And I'm not just talking about black people, but I'm talking about black people. I'm talking about Indian people. I'm talking about white people who don't believe in this bullshit, Latin people, Asian people, everyone who, do, who does not believe in in this bullshit, I'm going to call it what it is. It's fucking bullshit. They've already started with making homeless illegal and canceling and getting ready, rid of entire departments of DEI initiatives in so many countries, I mean, uh, companies across the country, so many co companies. It's absolutely ridiculous. School institutions right down here at the University of Florida. They cut that shit out and fired everybody. That's what they're going to do day one, January 1st. They're going to go in there and they're going to cut all of that shit 
and fire all of those people, all of those people, and they are going to install them with loyalists to their movement. And if you don't think that's true, pay a fucking attention. The writing is on the fucking wall. It's out there. Are you looking at that or are you watching fucking Drake and Kendrick? Are you looking at that or are you worried about the fucking BBL? You feel me? It's time for us to get serious about more shit than our image, than our own personal image, because we are hung up on that. We really are our own personal image. I'm better than this. I'm better than that. I got this and I got that. Who gives a fuck what you have? Look at what the fuck is about to happen. What the fuck are you going to do when they take it from you? This is not a fucking joke. This is not a fucking game. And nobody is fucking playing around but us. And when I say us, you know who the fuck I'm talking about. We have to get serious. I'm going to take a break. And when I come back, we'll talk more about this. Project 2025 shit. I've talked about this before in the past, but I got to bring it up again. And I think I'm going to bring it up quite frequently until we get there or until somebody hears my fucking voice or it gets out there somewhere. But I'm going to keep talking about it. And I'll talk about it some more when I come back from this break. I'm Darren Harris. This is my podcast. I'll be right back. Attention, Americas. Listen to the Outcast podcast. A white guy, a black guy, and a brown guy meet weekly for the wildest conversations about the latest headlines, hearsay, and scandal. Join the freaking Puerto Rican, Ramo G, the native son of the South, Tom Cat, and your best friend in the whole wide world, Memphis Outcast podcast. Listen on Spotify. Watch on YouTube. Now. Back to the Darren Harris Podcast. Hey folks, what's up? Welcome back to the show. Today I'm talking about Project 2025 again. And I'm going to keep talking about it. I think I'm going to keep talking about this shit because ain't nobody listening. People are just now, I can't believe, I cannot believe they're saying I'm hearing people are just now hearing about this. Well, a lot of people have known. I've, I've known. I, I, I've known. I've known about it. And the fact that there are people that say that they don't know really goes to show you what people are really paying attention to. They're not paying attention to things that are happening in their communities, in the country. They're just paying attention to things that have entertainment value. To a lot of people, politics isn't entertaining. It's just fucking boring, bunch of white guys in suits, you know, spewing a bunch of bullshit. Well, yeah, that's exactly what it is. It's a lot of bullshit. It's headed our way in the form of Project 2025. And a lot of people ask, why is it so dangerous? Because, honestly, they don't really want to take the time to do the research to find out what it's about. And that's fine if you don't want, you don't want to do the research. That's That's completely on you, but don't. Don't be upset when, when, like I said, they put a fucking fence around your neighborhood and you can't leave it. Oh, now you want to fucking vote. Now you want to, you got something to say. So I don't want to fucking hear it. So Project 2025. People are like, for the people who don't know, it's a, it's a plan written by conservative groups or conservative, like a think tank. I think it's the call the like the Heritage Foundation. And it's a bunch of fucking white guys in suits trying to make the country the way that they view that it should be, the way that they think that the United States should be. And it is not good for a large majority of us, particularly black people. It's just not good for us. It's just not. It's going to dismantle all these policies that were implemented 
in recent years. All these things that we achieved in recent years. Remember the the dismantling or we were going to take down these Confederate statues? Well, guess who's coming the fuck back, folks? In full force. It's happening. Shit related to climate change, shit related to health care, shit related to social injustice, shit just... They're trying to do away with all of that shit. All this shit could seriously, seriously negative impact all the efforts that we've made to try to address any systemic issues like like, like environmental justice and like economic in- inequality and, and shit that disproportionately affects black people. I mean, shit. I mean, in other marginalized communities as well, but black people in particular... It's almost like I said, it's almost like like people are gunning for us. They're gunning for us. No more discrimination against white people while they continue to discriminate against the black people. What in the actual fuck is that? That's the shit I have the problem with. That's the shit I have the problem with. They want to continue their shit. But they want they don't want any shit back for it. They don't want any they don't want to, they don't want to hear about it. They don't want any feedback from the shit that that they that they want to that they want to inflict. They want to roll back like civil rights protections like affirmative action and all kind of shit. All kind of shit. They don't want us to learn shit. They don't want us to have jobs. Oh, they're going to reform criminal justice, all right, to go out and find more black people to put in these jails that all of a sudden we have to have. We got to have these jails. We got to get these things built. And the reason why is because Project 2025 is coming, and they're looking to put a lot of us away. It was a plan, folks, a long plan, like I said. It was a long, it was the long game. Didn't see it coming. But they're trying to put us away. They want to put us in jail. Why? Free labor. And then guess what you are? They stopped like, they don't call you, you're a criminal or a slave now. Because you work for them. And you can't go anywhere. And you're discredited. And like I said, I've said this in other podcasts. I don't understand. You know, the guy they just, they, they gave him the nomination. This motherfucker is a felon. <laughs> He's the only person walking around with 34 felonies. What is it, 34 felonies? That's free. He's, that's totally free. He's out. The only felon I know that gets to vote in the state of Florida because the governor made special concessions so this man could vote for himself. How special. I just think it's, I just think it's, it's malicious. It's, of course, it's devices, de- divisive, but it's not only that, it's malicious. There's so much malice and hatred behind this. They don't call you nigga no more. They call you liberal. That's what they call you. They call you liberal. They don't call you nicotine. Oh, these liberals. Yeah, okay, there's some white folks in there too, but they're really talking to us. They're really talking to us. We know who you're talking to. Because the majority of us vote liberally. It's just the facts. So that's who they're talking to. They don't call us niggas no more. They call us liberals. Harshly. It's time to wake up, y'all. It's time to understand that they're coming for us. Now, I'm not saying stand up and be violent. There's no no, no reason to be violent, right? Just like uh, the guy from the Heritage Foundation said, oh, it'll re- remain bloodless if the, if the Democrats will allow it to be. Like, what the fuck are you going to do, man? Well, we know what they're going to do. If they lose, they're going to want to fight. That's exactly what they're going to do. They're going to want to fucking fight. 
And who are they going to want to fight? They're going to want to fight us. But we have to be prepared to squash that out. We got to be prepared to squash that out. Like I said, I am not calling for violence, but I am calling for you to protect yourself. Stand your ground. That's what I am calling for. And if motherfuckers want to report me for this and go, oh my God, that's radical. Oh my, I can't believe he said that. Yeah, motherfucker, I said it. Because I can't believe y'all motherfuckers say half the shit y'all say. Can't believe it. So now here's, this is, this is where the fuck we are. This is where we are. This is where we are. And to everybody out there smiling in my face, hey man, cool man, we're fucking buddies, man. We're fucking, we're fucking cool, man. You know, hanging out, voting for, fuck you, okay? We're not buddies, all right? Make no mistake about it. We're not friends. Because you are actively, actively trying to get these these policies passed against me and people like me. I don't get it. I don't I don't understand. I mean if I mean by voting you genuinely genuinely think that you are better than someone. And that is not the case because no one is. Nobody's saying that there are. Nobody's saying that 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 we're better than anyone. The only thing we've ever wanted to do is live peacefully. Just like everybody else. That's the only thing we've ever wanted to do is live peacefully. But every time we get a little bit of anything, it's always taken from us or destroyed or, or I, you get what I'm saying, sabotaged in some way. And it's done with so much malice. And I don't understand why people are like this to other people. And it's ignorance. It really is. It's complete ignorance. But people, I guess they don't mind being fucking ignorant. I guess they don't mind as long as it serves the purpose that they want, which is we know what they want. This man isn't running on any other platform. He isn't running on any other platform. He hasn't even said anything. He hasn't said anything. He hasn't said, I'm going to help the, the health care. I'm going to go into these neighborhoods and I'm going to help these people with their health care. He hasn't said any of that. He hasn't said anything. As, as, as a matter of fact, he's just babbling around about how bad everything, everybody else on the other side is. You haven't said anything. The only thing you've done is badmouth people. And that's policy? No, because they're running on the fact they, that they support white supremacy. That's it. That's it. Fucking Hulk Hogan and his ass up there just fucking, yeah, brother. And you're fucking constipated ass. I mean... We know. We already know about his ass. We know this motherfucker is a racist. I used to be a Hulk Hogan fan, too. We know this motherfucker is a racist. All right, cool. So that's how we know, man. Kid Rock, Ted Nugent, we know, man. Motherfuckers who don't think Beyonce's album is country, we fucking know, man. You want to take your fucking music back, even though it's not your fucking music. Even though you didn't, in, you didn't even create, we did. And that's what it is. It's like they motherfuckers want us gone so they can be us. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know. That's how it feels. Maybe I mean I, maybe that's not the case, but that's how the fuck it feels. That's how the fuck it feels. Wow, we made this great dish. We're gonna call it soul food. Oh no no no, we're gonna call it country food. <laughs> okay, country food. <laughs> but shit changes under this shit man it really does man climate change changes all these policies that have been passed to protect our climate are going to be done away with so these people can make more money so they can make more money destroying the environment more and more and more giving everybody more sickness Causing us to go to the fucking hospital and be sick more. Which that changes healthcare access, which disproportionately f like affects black communities also. 
They're going to cut all that shit. No more fucking health care for motherfuckers. Motherfuckers going to be out here dying in the streets. And they're not going to care. You're going to go try to get something, and unless you have insurance or some of some sort, I'm sorry, man. There's the street for you. They're going to make it hard for you to get insurance. Deliberately making it hard. That's what this thing proposes. Now, that that has not come to fruition yet. But it's coming through, y'all. November is going to is 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 r- rushing up on us. You know, and I'm not a political guy, but the, I got I got I got to be right now. I have to be right now. I have to be right now. And everybody out there, oh, I'm not this political person. Motherfucker, you need to be right now. You need to be a political person right now. You need to be a super political analyst right now. And find out what the fuck is happening. If you don't have any insight, there is a social media influencer that I follow. And I'm going to give him a shout out. And I know he doesn't know me from Adam, but I'm going to give this guy a shout out. His name is Nick the Powers Guy. Nick the Powers Guy. Say it one more time. Nick the Powers Guy. He comes through with all the numbers and all the factual information about both political parties and what you need to know. Actual fact, not motherfuckers blowing smoke up your ass. Numbers themselves. Okay? Go look it up. Go look him up. I see him on Instagram all the time. It's Nick the Powers Guy. Okay? Nick the Powers Guy. This motherfucker's getting free advertising on my show. Nick the Powers Guy. Okay? He's going to break it down. He will break it down for you. And I know there's a lot of people out there who support, you know, fucking... Mr. Cheetos over here, but I noticed, but those are probably going to be the people who, oh, all right, this is bullshit. And then, okay, yeah, uh huh. Because everything is bullshit. Everything that doesn't agree with what he says is bullshit. Did it, it ever occur to you that what he's saying is bullshit? No, uh uh-uh, uh, because he can't lie. That is bullshit. It's bullshit. And y'all eating it down. Y'all slathering that shit down your fucking throats. You motherfuckers gonna put ketchup and hot sauce and barbecue sauce all over that shit and ate that shit down. You guys are eating bullshit every day. You love it. You must be loving this shit. You drink it down. Complete and total bullshit. Even in the debate. Even though Biden didn't show up to that motherfucker, even though this motherfucker didn't show up to the motherfucker, the fact checker on all of you, they just, they call this motherfucker a fantastical liar. It's bullshit. And you're still eating it down. That's the stupidest shit in the world, man. That's the stupidest shit in the fucking world. The only reason, motherfuckers are folk, because you feel slighted by black people. You don't think black people should have their flowers. Oh, my family, we worked just as hard as these people, or we didn't have things. But you were never held down because of your race. And that's the shit that you don't understand, because that's the shit that you don't care about. And fuck you. It's bullshit. It's complete bullshit. And I'm tired of people laying down in it or standing up in it or do whatever they're fucking doing. They're standing up in this fucking bullshit without calling it for what it is. They're seeing this motherfucker talk bullshit and they're going, oh, okay, all right, okay, as long as we stand for white supremacy, go team, go. That's what the fuck it is. What the fuck you doing? Instead of understanding that this man has always been full of of shit full of it full of bullshit full of bullshit full of it motherfuckers not paying people that work for him did honest work for him i ain't gonna pay these motherfuckers discriminating against people for housing not once but twice getting sued just sued not that's not bullshit that's real shit but you motherfuckers is eating the bullshit chewing it down that's all you are is bullshit eaters and all you motherfuckers out here flying these flags and just, you're just, you're eating 
Bullshit. You got brown shit all over your fucking mouth. You're full of it. You're so full of it. When you go to the fucking bathroom, you don't shit out your own shit. You shit out his shit. You motherfuckers are just so full of fucking bullshit. It's ridiculous. It's hilarious. <laughs> I'm sorry. Y'all. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll be here fucking fucking with myself. But I'm serious, man. I, you know, I don't mean to be hateful, man. I really, I really don't mean to be that guy. I don't really mean to be this hateful dude where I'm just like, ah, you know, fuck these people. And because I'm not like that. I don't want to say fuck these people, man, because we're all here on the same fucking continent, the same rock, whatever we want to fucking call it, the same country. We're here together. Now, I understand some of us got here under duress. Now, I understand some of us got here, you know, without any problems at all. I understand some of us were already here. But the thing about it is, is we're all here now. Right. We're all here right now. Now, there's some ways we can go. Now, we can continue to be like, man, fuck this. And this is bullshit. Or we can say, you know what, man? That dude right there, he goes to work every day just like I do. That dude right there, he's got a family and loves his kids. That dude right there, he's got a mortgage and a car payment. That dude right there, he's got a, you know, he's really hell of a fucking baseball player. And that dude right there, he's a smart motherfucker. And on the same side of that cord, that dude right there is a fucking child molester. But it's everybody. It's not one group of people. We're not going to single anybody out anymore. That's what we shouldn't be doing. Because I'm going to tell you what. People say black people commit crime. Yeah, black people do commit crime. But you know who else commits crime? White people. And you know who else? Spanish people. And you know who else? Asian people. And Indian people, everybody commits crimes. And it's fucking time that people stop putting labels on motherfuckers and start wearing it themselves because they are just as guilty. You have dirt on your fucking mouth, too. So stop standing up here telling motherfuckers how bad black people are before you turn the mirror around on yourself and understand how bad you are as well and how bad these motherfuckers over here are and how bad those motherfuckers over there are at the same turn how good these people are and those people are great and these people I love them to death it's a choice folks that's exactly what it becomes it becomes a choice are you going to hate people or are you going to love them or are you going to pretend to love them but really hate them what are you going to choose I know what I chose a long time ago. I chose that I was going to love people and hate this bullshit. And everybody who spits it, anybody who spews it, I love people, but I hate this bullshit. And I'm going to stand the fuck up. I don't care who it is, black, white, yellow. I don't give a fuck who you are. If you're talking that bullshit, I'm going to shoot it right the fuck back at you. Because it's bullshit. You know it's bullshit. You know it's bullshit. You're sitting up in church every Sunday. We love Jesus, but we can't stand niggers. Shut the fuck up. You hypocritical son of a bitch. That's who the fuck you are. You shit-eating, hypocritical ass muncher. Fuck you. And yes, my podcast is harsh. And I'm going to tell you because I'm not afraid to tell you because somebody needs to tell you because you need to fucking hear it. Everybody does, and it's everybody. Black people, you need to take your ass out and fucking vote. Stop worrying about what the fuck Kendrick Lamar and Drake are beefing about and understand that Project 2025 is out to fucking get you. Did you hear me? Now, if you don't have a felony, if you have a, I'm sorry, if you have a felony, I, I, I'm i sorry, you won't be able to participate. But if you are 18 years of old and you are of age to vote, I don't care whatever it is you, I don't care what you do for a living, if you work at fucking Popeye's or if you work for fucking Jesus, you need to be your ass down there voting in fucking force. And in Spanish, con fuerza. You need to be down there voting in force and understand understand 
understand this, and this is going to be a very real part of it, and this is why we really need to all show up. They are going to try as hard as they can to suppress our votes. They have drawn lines in different districts to ensure that our votes count less. We have to show up. We have got to be there. We cannot miss this bus. And the more we sit out here and the more we, we fuck around and not worry about it, I'm out here trying to get the bag and the BB, fuck that shit right now. Be more than enough time to get the bag once your ass comes over here and votes for our democracy to keep our freedoms do you understand that they are trying to take your freedoms and everything you are about away from you? You must not. Or it must not be that important to you. Because the top thing on my list is to vote. That's the top shit on my list is to vote. And I don't want a mail-in ballot because I don't. I want to go in there and go... I voted, for, and I want the little sticker, put it on my lapel. That's right, I voted against these motherfuckers. Yep, that was me who did it. And I think people need to, I think people need to not be afraid. And I'm going to tell you what: if you are out there and you are conservative and you don't vote Democratic, you know, I I understand your, I understand your dilemma. I understand your dilemma. But if you don't support this man and you don't support this practice and you don't support these ideologies, then it is your duty. It is your duty to help America. It's your duty to help your country. OK, so this one time you need to you need to step on this side of the aisle to ensure that there will always be two sides of the aisle. So that everybody gets a voice. We don't have to listen to just one. It's a scary thing happening. It's a scary time coming. It's an impending doom that I feel in my fucking bones every day. I told you in the beginning of my podcast, my mental health is all over the place. Yeah. I suffer from major depressive disorder and extreme anxiety. I have insomnia. There's a lot of shit going on with me lately. I don't sleep. My wife is always like, what's wrong? Lots of shit is wrong, man. Shit is fucking wrong. But we are the only ones that can make it right and ensure that it stays right. I think we're getting a new candidate, though, which could potentially be great, but also might also be too late. But I think our president is going to stand down and um, allow someone else to try and win. It's going to be a hard one. It's going to be a task. It's going to be a task for whoever's coming up to beat this guy. But there is one person, I, you know, if you're listening, man, I hope so. There's one person I think would would give it a good shot and probably could pull it off. Wouldn't that would be John Stewart? I think John Stewart could pull it off. I think he'd be a good president. I think John. I would love to have him on my show, man. I think I just so I could tell him in person that I think that he should do it. Please help us, because that dude right there, he tells the fucking truth. Now I know a lot of you conservatives are like, ah, oh, fuck that guy. But no, man, that guy actually tells the truth about a lot of shit. It's just that. A lot of the conservative policies, they just can't accept for themselves because they are very divisive. They are very one-sided. They are very in your business. That's the problem. That is the, that is the problem with, with, with conservative people is they want to be in your business. It's essentially what it is. They're in your business. They claim that they want to get rid of government, but they want to still control what the fuck they want to control you. They want to they want to be in your business. Don't let them fool you. That's exactly what it is. Now, I'm not a democrat. I don't I but I do vote democratically.
but I don't consider myself. I just wish there was another option, but I know one option I don't want, and that's motherfuckers in my business all the time. So yeah, if you're gonna call me, I guess you have to call me one then. And you know, I I don't I don't sit up here and spew it out. I'm just if 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 the Democrats have policies like this, I'd be voting for Republicans. You know what I'm saying? If this was the shoe on the other foot, I'd be voting for. I vote against hate, man. I vote against divisiveness. I vote against motherfuckers who think they better than motherfuckers. I, 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 that's what I vote against. And if, if you could sit up here and vote for that, then you got a fucking problem, man. And that's the truth. And I don't care who I offend. I don't care who it hurts. I don't care who don't like me or unfriends me any. I don't give a fuck, man. I don't give a fuck. I, I really don't. You got a fucking problem. If you can sit up here and you can say, this man right here is is what I follow and what I want America to be like, then fuck you. I think that's going to do it for this episode of Darren Harris Podcast, folks. I want to thank my parents <clears throat> for giving me my mouthpiece. I want to thank my wife for being a great wife and a wonderful supporter. And encouraging me to do this. I want to call my best friend. I want to not call. I want to uh, thank my best friend and producer. For uh, calling me every day. And fucking shaking the trees like a motherfucker. <laughs> this man literally calls me every day to anger me. To make me mad. My best friend calls me every morning to anger me. <laughs> and I get angry. Sometimes I hang up the phone and I cry. And I let it out. And thanks, man. I appreciate that. I thank Gentry Thomas <clears throat> for giving me this platform because, man, I don't know who else would let me do this. <laughs> and I want to thank the people that are listening. That is, that is, that's who I want to thank the most because without you, I wouldn't be able to sit here and do this. And this means a lot to me because I, I, I think that some of the things that I have to say are important to hear. And I think that some of the things that I have to say, you know, are very, very valid in today's climate. And I think that some of the things I have to say might actually help some people find a solution. Maybe light a fire under somebody's ass and, you know, get them to go out and, and do something about what's going on here in our country. I'm, I'm, I'm not a political guy, but I will say this. I love my country. I love, um, regardless of how I love America, you know, I just want Americans to love America. You know, I love my country and everybody in it. And I just want that, that, that sentiment to, to be more frequent and listen to my podcast. Hopefully we can achieve that together. Okay. I mean, tell a friend, share it with everybody, man. Follow me on social media. I'm Darren T. Harris, comedian on Instagram. You can, you can follow me there. That's D E R O N T Harris comedian on Instagram. And um, yeah, I think that we got some 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 hunkering down to do, folks. But I don't think that it's impossible. But I do think we have a very 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 large hill to climb. In fact, this is the largest hill I think we've ever had to climb as a people so again thank you for listening and i will see you guys next week on the darren harris podcast have a have a wonderful week next week i love y'all peace you've been listening to the darren harris podcast subscribe to the show give a good rating and everything you need to know is at darrenharris.com